We need to take some measurements okay. for your new spectacles. So if we take those off for a moment. And what I need you to do is just hold this up like a pair of binoculars. And if you look down there for me, that's it. Good. If you look at the light, that's fine. Great. Thank you. And we'll measure you for your new pair. So if you pop those on for me, and I always get the patient to put the frame on when I'm going to fit for varifocals or bifocals because that's where they want to wear them. I mark the lenses with the HCL and then two above, four above, six above and eight above. So when the patient puts them on, they put the frame on where they want to wear them and I can tell straight away where I want the fitting cross to be positioned. So if you look in this side for me, so that's four above and that side for me and that's six above. So the frame's sitting straight on the patient. So I would actually set the heights at four and at six above. So when I look at the patient, if they're not quite even, I would check the fit of the frame first to see if the frame's uneven or if the eyes, uh, if one eye's slightly higher than the other. I don't mark the patient with the pen because some people back off and they don't like it. And also if my hand's a bit unsteady, it doesn't it give them any confidence in me. But the problem is sometimes that when you say you're taking measurements, people will often sit bolt upright and it's very hard then to get them in a natural position. So if that's the case, what I would do is chat a little bit, ask them about their family, ask them if they've been on holiday this year, and then they start to relax. I can see where I'm going to put the fitting cross uh, when they're in their natural posture. So my next task is to actually fit the frame. So to do that, I would check the bridge fitting and I would then make a note of the distance between the pad centres. I'm measuring this from the centre of the left pad to the centre of the right pad and it measures 17 millimetres. This is particularly important when I measure progressives in a metal frame because if those pads are moved out of shape, the patient won't be looking through the right part of the lenses and could have difficulty with the distance or the near vision. So when the patient comes back and complains that they can't see properly, all I have to do is look on the record card and check the distance between pad centres instead of marking the lenses up all over again. My next task would be to measure the angle of side. Again, I'd make a note of it. Place the zero into the middle of the joint and the flat of the rule is flat onto the back of the frame and I measure through the middle of the side. So you can see that the angle of side is nine degrees. When dispensing universal progressives, the angle of side of the frame has to be 10 degrees because standard progressives are pre-decentered to be fitted at a 10 degree tilt. If you use freeform progressives, they can be dispensed at any angle of side because they're made to measure progressives. If you pop those on again for me, I'd always check the length to bend. So if you could turn that way for me. And so I measure from the dowel point to the ear point. And again, to that side for me, Mrs. Charmley, that's fine. So do it for both right and left. And then I can make any adjustments necessary. And I can also shorten the sides if required. And the final measurement that I take is actually the head width measurement. So if you haven't got head width calipers at work, you can always use a facial rule and a frame rule. When we measure the head width, we measure ear point to ear point and Judith measures 145 millimetres. When setting up the frame, I'd compensate the head width for a close fitting. So I would reduce the head width by 10 millimetres. This is ideal for patients who wear turbans or head scarves or maybe a wig. 
so that the spectacles fit close. I want to adjust the let back on each side to make the head width 135 so it's compensated to fit the patient. With this being a super frame, it's easier to use the rimless pliers to grip where the super cord meets the rim. Then I don't risk chipping the lens. So I grip with the rimless pliers and with the half cover pliers, I can then easily adjust the let back. This is a very easy way that can be used to also increase or decrease the angle of side of the frame. So if I check the head width now, you can see that it measures 135. So when the patient puts it on, if you put your head down for me, it fits comfortably at the ear points. To alter the angle of side with a Supra, it's easy to angle the lug. So we can increase or decrease the angle of side of the frame and stop the lens from chipping or from the cord breaking. If the patient only had one ear or maybe no ears, then I would straighten the side and I would reduce the angle of let back, therefore decreasing the head width and then the frame would fit closer for the patient.